Okay, council updates are at the end. I mean, I'll move. Yeah. No, I'm just going to have to strategically go to one place to the other. Because they're in that, they have one right here, and there's this, and then they're all going to separate locations. Yeah. I don't say that, do I? I don't know. Fine. Nope. Motion to adopt the agenda. <coughs> Let the agenda be adopted. You cried? <laughs> No, I say that. My oldest yeah, yeah, she's you filling in my the sheets. Manager, right, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, um, we'll read it off the sheets. Marcus it's just it's it's that. Okay. Okay. I was thinking about you. I was thinking about you this weekend as I was relaxing. Father's Day, just so. Oh man. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our regular council meeting for June 19th, 2023. Uh, today, we, uh, we're going to make our land acknowledgement. We'd like to acknowledge the traditional territories and the oral practices of the Blackfoot Nation, which include the Siksika, the Kainai, and the Pekani. We also, also acknowledge the Satina and the Stony Nakoda First Nation and Métis Nation Region 3 and all the people who make their homes in Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. We're making this acknowledgement to demonstrate our continuing efforts to work together as we strive for reconciliation through in increased and collective learning. I'm going to call this meeting to order and uh, we have our agenda here before us and so uh, moved by Councillor Jessica that the agenda be adopted as presented. All in favor? Okay. All right. All right. And uh, moved by Councillor Dries that the minutes of the regular councillor meeting held June 5th, 2023 be approved. All in favor of that? Great. Thank you. All right, and uh, we're now going to have the RCMP report. So did I read the motion first? Yep. Moved by Councillor Nesbitt that May 2023, the RCMP report be accepted as information. Please. Uh, thank you, councillors. Uh, so for uh, the month of May and this year, um, Brooks Detachment members responded to 390 municipal calls for service. We've lodged a total of 30 prisoners in cells. Uh, 169 municipal criminal record checks were completed and 34 violation tickets were issued uh, within the city by Brooks RCMP and 100 violation tickets were issued within the county and the city um, by Redcliffe, uh, the traffic unit. Um, some significant events uh, for the month of May on the 13th, we responded to a complaint of a male trying to assault another male with a knife. Uh, this occurred near the, uh, the hospital. The males were known to each other. The, the attack was not random. Uh, we arrived on scene and arrested a 30-year-old male who's been charged with assault with a weapon. And uh, the victim did not sustain any serious injuries. On May 18th, RCMP, along with Southern Alberta Crime Reduction Unit, as well as... Uh, the Brooks RCMP, the SAD Emergency Response Team, 
the RCMP auto theft unit. Uh, they all executed a search warrant at a home in Dutchess. Uh, this was following a three week long investigation. Uh, RCMP seized 500 grams of cocaine, a number of replica firearms as well um, as other items common, commonly associated for the use of uh, drug trafficking. Two local men have been charged with possession for the purpose of trafficking as well as additional offenses and uh, both men uh, were remanded into custody. Uh, this is a significant and important drug seizure for the city of Brooks as well as the surrounding area uh, as well as a major disruption of drug trafficking in the community. Um, other than that, the um, only thing I have to report, uh, we have an experienced corporal coming to Brooks, which I think I mentioned. Uh, his transfer's been finalized. He's just waiting to sell his house in Airdrie, and then uh, he'll be looking to move to Brooks. That's all I have uh, for my report. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. All right. Is there any questions from Council? Councillor Jessica. No, thank you for your report. Um, I know there was an incident in the theatre here a couple of weeks ago where uh, two groups were getting a little bit rambunctious. And then uh, uh, I, there has been some word and uh, maybe I've seen some indications of some vandalism happening late in, at night and uh, I heard that there was a group or groups uh, behind this. Uh, is there something new happening or an escalation or is that an exaggeration? Yeah, I, I don't know the specific details of each incident, but I, I do know what you're talking about. And uh, from what I've seen uh, from reviewing the files, uh, I, I can't say for sure if it's one specific group or just happens to be uh, a few separate incidents that's happened over um, the same period of time. Um, but our investigation into, to, I mean, there was uh, at the Legion specifically as well as some businesses around it. Um, those were vandalized uh, last week. Uh, we're still looking into those. It's still ongoing investigation right now. So, okay. Thank you. Any other questions from councillors? All right, you're getting off easy today with a warning. No. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Roger. Take care. <laughs>
uh, worth of, uh, of of giveaways from different businesses downtown. And, and I think the idea is to go ahead and do this on a monthly basis. Maybe maybe there will be one um, around around uh, Thanksgiving. There will be one around Christmas. There will be one so th th about the different uh, around the different events that's happening every month. Uh, a new website has been uh, officially launched, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Um, the, the new website highlights uh, the, the, the downtown area, the business in the downtown, um, and, and some of the activities the group is doing. Um, for any business who would like to be uh, put on the, on the website, there has to be a consent. Um, there, although, although it's, it's a geographic location, and if you are in that, in that geographic location, you are part of the the downtown, the group decided that for, for businesses who would like to be featured on the website, they actually they have to apply and they fill a form and then they will be put on the website. Uh, a, a number of different uh, other projects going on. Uh, um, the, the, the group applied for a grant from Brooks Region Tourism uh, and got some money to do an uh, there, there is the idea of creating some sort of an art walk in downtown. Um, so there will be painting some mor mor uh, morals on the buildings, and and uh, and uh, they got some money. And the idea is maybe to even come to the city, come to different uh, art and culture, and, and 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 try to get some more money. Um, and and it's about trying to present downtown in a very visibly uh, attractive way, especially considering that we are going to have. Uh, uh, the, the the games coming up in August and there will be a lot of uh, over a thousand people will be in our community to be a good uh, a good opportunity to 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 make our community look good um, that's why also partially they are partnering with uh, with the communities in Bloom and, and with some youth to do a cleanup uh, in downtown uh, uh, hopefully before that. This idea of collaboration is, is big with the new group. Uh, um, there has been talks with the CF communities, communities in Bloom, arts and culture, the city, um, and, and it's about, again, uh, what else can we do to make uh, downtown more attractive so people can come uh, as a destination and, and shop and also uh, entertain here downtown. And that's why they are looking for some fundraising ideas and they, were, uh, th they are considering that. Uh, uh, some 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 uh, other downtown events that is happening in the next couple months. Uh, the farmers market, of course, is going on uh, till October. Um, the co presidents, I think, rang the bell on the first day, um, and we in, in, in the downtown gr the, the downtown group um, created this open late sign in different areas in the city, so that people know that it's Terrace Day and they can come downtown for the uh, for the market. The car show is coming back. The Bolorama is coming back uh, to downtown soon. Uh, the, the, the next uh, committee that I sit on is the Newell Region uh, Tourism Association, uh, officially known as Brooks Region Tourism. Um, a few things to bring from that committee. We have applied for Travel Alberta Cooperative Grant Funding, um, and this is a grant that is about 100,000 uh, in up to 100,000. And um, the last couple of years, we received 50,000, 40,000, but uh, we are hoping that this month, this time, we are going to receive 65,000 uh, uh, dollar. Nothing official yet, but um, Jamie, Jamie from from the tourism group said that uh, she has received informal uh, confirmation that we are going to receive around that many. Uh, we were recently also, we participated recently at the Calgary Outdoor Show. It's, it's a big show that happens in Calgary to, to highlight tourism opportunities in the, in the, in the outdoor uh, area around, the, around Calgary and around Southern Alberta, I believe. And, uh, and, and uh, something funny. Um, so there is always this, this confusion between Drumheller, uh, Dinosaur Park, Brooks. We say it's ours. They say they are the dinosaur capitals uh, of, of, of the world. <coughs> so one of the one of the banners uh, the group used in at the Calgary Outdoor Show it says Brooks Region Tourism, and then between brackets, not Drumheller. Uh, <laughs> so it was it it, it, attracted, it attracted attention. Even the Drumheller group came and took some pictures, and and it was it was a laugh. Um, so it's it's about highlighting that you know we we have the dinosaur park just you know outside our, our own backyard, and um, many people don't know that. 
the DMF, uh, the destination marketing, this thing, destination marketing fund, I believe, is is the main source that that funds the organization. And um, some happy news that um, the, the 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 hotel the hotels in our community that uh, fund that agreed to increase their funding from one percent to two percent. That will actually almost double our funding from that uh, that uh, line item. Um, so the Canalta in 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 the heritage. Uh, going forward they are going to do two percent uh, dmf uh, contribution uh, there was recently uh, also done by the group uh, best of brooks region survey uh, places to eat places to shop things to do and events um, in in the top uh, five of each category were highlighted through social media in in, in websites and things like that mm. There was the sports of the sports event congress uh, from June five to eight, I believe. We, I didn't go to the June meeting yet. At the May meeting, we agreed that uh, you guys are going. To, you guys, I, I believe you you, you you went with us. Yeah, yeah. So we that's done. Um, and then finally, uh, the new grow um, similar similar to the the Brooks uh, economic uh, the Brooks region economic development uh, new grow uh, initiative so uh, we put some money uh, people can apply for it through uh, to to develop to develop uh, uh, tourism experiences and, uh, and 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 that also happened with new grow um, my next thing is shared services and i believe uh, Councillor good enough, uh, Deputy Mayor good enough, have reported on that last uh, last time. So I'm going to jump that. Um, Safe Communities Committee, um, a lot going on in terms of community education, community promotion of different uh, things, uh, looking at different concerns in the community, different areas, whether it's intersections, uh, whether it is crosswalks, uh, things like that. Um, but what I would like to highlight here is that there is a youth police. The youth, the police, the youth police academy. Uh, I think, I think application is out. Um, we got some funding from uh, the community foundation, and it's happening in a better way, uh, bigger way this year. Um, there is also, um, I think, that is what I want to highlight here. And then uh, I'm going to jump to my provincial committee, the municipal governance committee with the Alberta municipalities. Um, I had two meetings in the last couple months, April and June. Uh, as you all know, we attended, myself and Mayor Petrie and Ellen uh, attended um, the, the President Summit. So there is now a document that has been put together <coughs> around what we heard, document from the, th from the summit. It's, it's still in a draft, and I think it has been emailed to many. Uh, I, I don't know if it was only the people who attended or all councillors. Uh, so it's it's a do it's a draft document. Uh, we we looked at it and we approved it last time, and now it's going to the the board of the Alberta municipalities uh, to be finally ap approved, and then and then it could be shared. Um, at the last meeting, we also talked about Copter, the community organization, property tax exemption regulations, um, because there is there is a review going on. The minister asked for a review. And and uh, you know there was there was a good discussion at the meeting around do we want it, it do we do we want that regulation to be a little bit more clearer uh, with 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 very standardized uh, process and things like that and there was there was two school of thought um, one one group was saying that you know maybe maybe leaving it like this will give every community some sort of a flexibility how to, how to apply it and, and, and things like that while while some other groups were saying that you know no if it's if it's clearer if there is some sort of a standardized application then it's easy and then and, and then you can do it that way so that was discussed a little bit and and of course now the review is with the all that all of the feedback is with the minister uh, to make a decision on that uh, uh, we also talked about the, the, the convention and, and some of the things that's going to happen there, the resolutions, for example. A couple of resolutions uh, that is of interest. Uh, one is the resolution that we, we sponsored, the Brooks Resolution, um, and it's, it's around the idea that we want municipal elections to be free of uh, party uh, affiliations and things like that. That is on the books. 
Um, two other resolutions I would like to just touch on is, is a resolution submitted by, I think, Edmonton, I believe. Uh, um, and it's around affordable housing. And, and, and they want the, the province to exempt affordable housing organizations from paying property taxes. That's going to be very significant. Like, for example, if, if Brooks Housing Society or, or, or for example, uh, Newell Region uh, Foundation and, and the different groups like that don't pay how property taxing, that will be a big, I think, significant number for our, our, our uh, tax uh, role. Um, again, it will come to the floor. Um, there was groups that wanted this to come to the floor. There was people that didn't want this to come to the floor. It's the resolution has fulfilled all of the requirements, so it is going to come to the floor, and it will be up to the membership to 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 uh, see what they want. Uh, another another resolution I want to touch on is the Indigenous Education Resolution. Uh, it came last year for those who attended last uh, last uh, last convention and it was actually the only resolution defeated last uh, last uh, year and um, it's coming back there, there there are few clarifications that it's added uh, but one of the big things that was last year that uh, you know is it our role to to uh, to advocate for things to happen in the schools because the resolution asks for funding from the provincial government for indigenous uh, awareness education in the schools, and one of the one of the issues that came up last year that is that part of our our mandate or our scope, um, the, the, the 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 community that put this resolution forward was was asked to maybe change it, and and, and, and make it that funding to the libraries, so uh, so that makes it a little bit more within the municipal uh, realm, but uh, they believe that they wanted it to come that way. So we will see what happens. Hopefully, it will be uh, a positive uh, uh, experience this time. Finally, there was uh, a revised code of conduct guide. Um, there has been a lot of discussion around, um, you know, how 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 do we how do we police ourselves as counselors? Uh, and and uh, there was few things happening. For example, uh, even in the news, there was uh, a community that used the the recall legislation. To, to recall one of the councillors happening for the very it happened for the very first time in Alberta in since the, the since the regulation was passed uh, a councillor that maybe have uh, acted in ways that is not in the best interest of the community as they believed and they they used the, res the resolution uh, or the legislation to recall him um, so all of these kind of discussions brought the idea that maybe we need a revised code of conduct and, and, and we approved that and we sent it to the board so hopefully the board will approve that and then um, it will be shared. Finally, um, um, I, these are my committees. Um, I also want to touch base on um, last week we actually had a group of uh, leaders from all over the Commonwealth countries visit our community. The Duke of Edinburgh's Commonwealth Study Conference. This is very similar to the Governor General's Leadership Conference, um, where the Governor General Leadership Conference is from all over Canada. Uh, but this one uh, members 18 people from all over. Uh, it's the, the whole conference is 300 people. Uh, 18 of them visited Brooks. Um, those 18 came from Australia, India, the United Kingdom, Malaysia, <coughs> Namibia, Pakistan, South Africa, Botswana, Jamaica, Tanzania, Kenya, and Niger Nigeria. Um, they are leaders in their in their countries. I think we have had someone who worked in the office of the Prime Minister of Zambia, uh, Namibia. We had someone who uh, worked with with uh, the United K Kingdom government. There was there was uh, people who worked in uh, tech industry in India. Um, and, and it was a very very good discussion. We we hosted them at the at the JB, at the engineer's house, um, uh, and we also invited JBS, uh, SPEC, BCIS in the schools because they were really interested in the work that we have done around diversity and inclusion in Brooks. We had we had wonderful discussion. Um, I just want to actually thank Lisa and 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 Courtney. Uh, that came and, and, and presented and, 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 and led the discussion. Uh, they did a fantastic job. Uh, so I just wanted to say thank you to them. And uh, thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much. Any questions for Councillor Dries? All right. John. 
No, we'll just finish this and then we'll move on. Honorable Mayor, councillors, people in the audience. Uh, the Brooks Newell Alberta 55 plus summer games are happening on Thursday, August 17th through to Sunday, August 20th. More volunteers are needed, such as sports, sport <coughs> activity chair, volunteers as timers, scorekeepers, etc., drivers to and from events, tour guides, banquet volunteers, and merchandise personnel and sales at the information center. Uh, it'd be very grateful if people that are willing to volunteer would call Kelly Sanford at 403-362-3622 if you're able to volunteer or if you have any questions about this event. All venues for the games are officially secured. Uh, lastly, uh, just happened with floor shuffle board and contract bridge will now be hosted at the Eastbrook Elementary School. Track and field are looking for two air conditioned trailers. If anyone knows of uh, anyone that would like to donate them for use at the games, uh, they'll put the computers and volunteers in there to keep score. Uh, the casino that was held uh, to raise money for this great event uh, in Lethbridge was a huge success and a thank you to all that participated in this event. Uh, the Brooks Hotel and TZ Food Services had been chosen to supply food for the banquet and all the events. Uh, Grassland School has also donated uh, buses and drivers for this event and they'll need a lot of them. Tours are finalized and will be a great interest to visitors such as Dinosaur Park and Kinbrook Island Park. And uh, there's a need for at least two tennis courts so there'll have to be an upgrade to the second court and time is of the essence. I guess the uh, surface is not up to snuff for what they need it for. And Bricks Public Library. Uh, we are in need of two more positions on our board. If anyone is interested in joining our very lively group, it's a lot of fun, read a lot of books. Uh, it's, it's got a lot to offer. It needs to increase its visibility and attract more users. It's the intent of this plan to provide guidelines to increase community engagement and library impact. Brick Public Library needs to promote itself using cost-effective methods. And for example, they're at the fall fair every week here. There's a table set up selling memberships for $10. There's books there to be bought or given away. Uh, so it'd be wise to go in there and just take a look at the library. It's a fantastic place. Uh, the primary audience there includes individuals, families, groups of all ages from five to Brooks in Division 5 and 10 of the County of Newell. Uh, we know we have a great group of stakeholders made up of the City Council, County Council, Alberta Government and Library Board and staff. And the objectives this year, new objectives, are to increase the number of library card holders, increase the attendance at all library events, increase the awareness of library services and increase the use of uh, library facilities like meeting rooms and increase awareness and attendance of all programs, which there are, are many. And then it, for those of you that don't know, it's down by the arena. Not that arena, this arena. Uh, Newell Regional Service Corporation. Uh, I know that Bill has given a report on this, but I like to give a report on not just what's happening in Brooks, but what's going on around the area too. We have a hydro survey come out and to do water wastewater lagoon sludge survey in Tilly. And they have to do that every few years to see how the water is flowing and just what's in there. Uh, they spend a day and a half on site and we sh should be seeing a detailed report in the coming weeks of what's happening. Um, normal operations have been observed. Phase two progress is a steady with no issues to report on this uh, big project. Uh, we've done some extra work on the Lake Newell Resort lift station assessment project recently. Uh, they went down to the adjacent manhole that is directly upstream across the street from the lift station. Uh, we plan on water jetting the line that feeds to the lift station from this manhole to clean it out and then having the line video to see what condition it's in. This is the last information we collect before a finalized report is presented. And this is a constant uh, process that's made in our, our water to make sure that we're getting the best water that we can possibly have. Um, uh, on the membrane modules, the membrane modules are what's in, in the system that cleans the water it goes through. And initial autopsy was performed. The fibers were extracted each container has plastic fibers that go up and clean the water as it goes through, and I believe there's 24 of them. And I believe the price for each one is astronomical, so they try to use them as long as possible. And so they'll be doing the testing on each one of these to, to see when they should be changed and how long it should be, uh, and how long it will last for. We should know that report next month. They did have a little bit of a 
uh, barbecue for staff and, and for council and uh, well attended, very good. Those of you that missed, it's too bad. Uh, short grass library system. Uh, this year has been very busy. This is from Medicine Hat. Uh, the majority of the time has been spent dealing with the following tasks. Changing payroll providers. Provisions of payroll services under the previous provider was taking a lot of time and request double and triple checking each payroll in such detail that it became unmanageable. And this is for a librarian that should be looking after things like the library. Uh, the, the new payroll provider offered 12 weeks uh, fee payrolls, making a very sensible decision. And the first new uh, payroll provider is April 15th, which was passed already. Everything went just great. Uh, they're dealing with a third, pers uh, third party bookkeeping firm now, providing information, payables, receivables, payroll information, and monitoring all bookkeeping and following up on all errors that have been made. Um, most of this is just office systems, but uh, they had had many um, presentations and meetings for the last uh, three months, such as in Tilly, the Elwood Library in Edmonton, the Bull Valley Library, um, and Tabor. And they go around and discuss at each place how their programs are working and maybe how other libraries can conform their accounting to their, their system. Um, the continued registering and supporting of staff and accessing the library guide to hom homelessness. Staff across the system assess the training platform well, uh, and, uh, 250 times in March. Uh, they've pre uh, completed all the challenges focused on this event. Um, they've got all the SRC prizes and supplementary materials for member libraries for the summer of this year coordinated story walk bookings for member libraries. Uh, they began preparing activities for the, to offer to all member libraries and began preparing for summer students. If you have any questions, I'm right here. Thank you. Well, he is right there. Is there any questions for him? All right. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I just mentioned a couple things here. Uh, Councillor Dries and I was at the 80th anniversary for the ceremonial review for number 239 of the Royal Air, uh, Royal Canadian Air Cadets and uh, an amazing looking group of, of uh, kids or youth that were a part of that that contribute to our community in different ways and resources. And also shortly after that, we attended the Smoker Wars, uh, which I had two full plates. I know Councillor Jessica was a judge at that and he was fed up and uh, it was a great weekend in the city of Brooks and so uh, last thing I did want to mention though uh, just for council committee stuff is Wednesday 21st is Indigenous People Day and I've had a lot of questions is that the day we wear our orange shirts and actually that's uh, September 30th but you can always wear your red your orange shirt uh, as a, a sign of solidarity or, or support uh, for the things that are going on within our First Nation community. All right to that um, uh, all in favor of the report? Oh, sorry, sorry, John. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Council of Wardrop does have a report on the recreation and parks, of which I could give, but I know she has a very concise report that she wanted to give at the next meeting. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. To the motion by Councillor Dries. All in favor? All right. Thank you. Carried. Okay, we're going to go back uh, here to, um, whereabouts is it here? First page. To our delegation, I'm going to ask Coy Larson uh, to come on up to the mic and support. So, do I read that now? Oh, wait. All right. Moved by Councillor Jessica that Coy Larson Memorial Bull Riding Tournament presentation be accepted as information. Uh, good afternoon, councillors in the audience, I guess. Uh, my name's Kyle Larson, and this is Brian Cowie, the organizer for the second annual, I guess, Coy Larson Memorial PBR. And in some capacity, I guess, we're representing PBR Canada. Um, we want to entertain the idea of putting on uh, professional bull riding at the CRA in Brooks 
followed by a headline act uh, like Corp Lund, who we've been in talks with as of late, and we're still working on touring dates for next year for him to see if it works, and then a backup plan of uh, Coulter, uh, uh, Coulter Wall. So uh, that's, that's where we'd like for briefing the presentation. I sent a video to show the council here if you want to see exactly what were happened this year. Thank you, Tom. was my little girl at the end there, the cowboy that won this event this year. Uh, he won a, a gold belt buckle, of course, and he gave it back to my daughter. Uh, me and my wife and son were going down to South Dakota on July 3rd last year, and uh, 7.30 in the morning, we left a little town called Column, South Dakota, to pick up these bulls, and we got 10 minutes down the road and we got hit by a drunk driver head on. My wife died instantly and my son, 14 years old, lost his life on the way to the, to the hospital that day. And uh, I was airlifted to Sioux Falls, but I'm recovering. And uh, PBR Canada brought this to me to see if I wanted to put my name on this event and do an event here. And, and uh, we did, and we were very successful this year at the Silver Sage. Uh, we sold it out. We could add more people, but the facility could not handle the capacity of which uh, the interest that we had. So this year we're looking at moving to the CRA where we can handle a lot more people and making it a bigger event. I, I don't know if there's any other questions that you guys might have. Um, there's a few other things as far as facility questions that we have as far as uh, the in and out, the workings with the boxes and liquor licenses and uh, promotions, I guess. And we are a nonprofit organization. Uh, last year, well, not last year, a few months ago, uh, we were all proceeds went to the MS Society and we raised about $20,000. So it's it's all nonprofit, so, and we haven't picked a charity for this event yet. We're hoping maybe we'll have some people that give us some inputs, and maybe even bring along the Kinsmen and Brooks if they're interested in working this with us, like they did the Paul Brandt. Um, but we are we are still open to to ideas, and maybe this time instead of donating to a a foundation that we can't really see where the money goes, we would like to do something maybe closer to home. Thank you so much for, uh, for presenting this, this afternoon.
kind of choked up, to be honest. Um, I know we've all read your story and we've heard, and uh, it's been a journey for you this last season. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, is there any questions from any councillors at this time? Councillor Dries. Uh, do we have dates and in, in everything or yes we're uh we've been working with uh the staff here with you guys and um we're looking at the may 10th weekend may 10th 11th weekend it would take a day to set up we need 250 cubic inches of dirt would cut the arena in half and then the 11th would be the date and then take down the following day so um, like I've never seen this done inside like a hockey arena is, is, is like safety whether for riders uh, animals uh, bringing in out all of that have you considered that possible well this is not a um, an unusual thing Wednesday will be in Regina where the Wheat Kings play uh, last week we were in uh, Fran in Manitoba at the hockey rink last year we did the rogers place for the edmonton oilers place okay. mm -hmm. these are professional people this is what we do we go in we set up at a hockey rink we take it down these guys that's what they do for a living okay. it, it's not a mickey mouse set up everything will be done to the standards of what you see on tv okay. if you watch tsn cvs sports on the weekend you'll see pbr events all over the united states and in canada Thanks, you, Cove, sir. Uh, any other questions? Have you have you had a chance to talk with uh, Randy, our manager of that? Yeah. With Randy. Do you want to speak to that? Through the chair to Councillor Goodenough. Yeah. So um, Kyle and and his team have been in contact with with us, and we've. Um, secured the dates. We've uh, discussed the dates even with, with the bandits and, and how it could affect their ice season and, and they're aware of this event and, and we can make it happen um, with the ice being taken out at that earlier that week and, and can have the floor ready for this. So from a, a facility perspective and as far as our staffing and everything goes, um, we're, we're good to go with, with hosting this event at the CRA. Okay, well, at this time, we'll take it for information, if there's no other questions. All right, moved by Councillor Jessica that the Coy Larson Memorial Bull Riding Tournament presentation be accepted for information at this time. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Moved by Councillor Jessica that July twenty, or sorry, July fifth, twenty twenty three, be hereby proclaimed as National Injury Prevention Day in the City of Brooks, and that'll be Amanda. Through the chair to Mayor and Council, on March twenty second, twenty twenty three, Mayor Petrie and Council received a letter from Alberta Health Services Health Promotion regarding National Injury Prevention Day. National Injury Prevention Day has been recognized by Health Canada as a National Health Promotion Day to raise awareness of preventable injuries and aiding individuals to live long lives to their fullest through injury prevention, education, and advocacy. Therefore, Alberta Health Services Health Promotion hereby requests that Council proclaims July 5, 2023 as National Injury Prevention Day in the City of Brooks and that City Hall be lit up green and that council were green on the day to commemorate okay to the motion any is there any questions first sorry all right to the motion all in favor all right, that's carried moved by councillor Dries that the council approved the 2023-2024 proposal uh proposed recreation rate and fees and that'll be randy yeah, through the chair to mayor and council, the city of Brooks Recreation Department surveys rates and fees of similar sized community recreation centers that have comparable services and amenities as the city of Brooks. By reviewing the rates and fees of these facilities, staff were able to evaluate and obtain information to determine future recreation rates and fees. 
The information obtained from the surveys was presented to the Brooks and District Recreation and Parks Board Indoor Committee on April 19th. From the information presented, the Indoor Committee brought forward the 2023-2024 proposed rates and fees recommendations to the Board. It's important to note the Indoor Committee and staff are not recommending a flat percentage increase to all rates and fees. The Indoor Committee reviewed each item individually and compared the sector average determined by the survey to develop the attached proposed rates and fees. The most significant proposed increases are to the various party packs. This is due to a complete revamping of the packages to create consistency on how the packages are priced. The proposed party pack rates are approximately between 74 to 70, 77% of regular cost of the individual services within the package. So for example, a youth party pack um, includes 15 youth admissions, two adult admissions, and two hours in the meeting room. Previously, the packages were priced between 50 to 62% of regular cost, and in some cases, were less cost than paying for one of the services that made up part of the package. There are several fees, particularly those for admissions and memberships, that are recommended to remain the same. Therefore, the overall average percentage increase is 3.88%. In addition, please note the following new rates and fees that are being proposed for 2023-2024, which are highlighted in the attached proposed recreation rates and fees for easy reference. There's been an addition of a turf conversion fee for the installation and, remo and removal of artificial turf in the field house, the addition of student rates for admissions and memberships for post-secondary students, and the addition of a play center party pack. Please also note, due to limitations with how services are set up in our recreation software, some of the swim lesson fees are not rounded to the nearest quarter. EID Aquatic lesson rates and fees will change starting September 1st, 2023, while all um, other rates and fees will come into effect as of August 1st, 2023. At the May 17th, 2023 Brooks and District Recreation and Parks Board meeting, the following motion was made. Moved by M. Wardrop that the Brooks and District Recreation and Parks Board recommends City of Brooks Council approve the 2023-2024 rates and fees as amended, and that was seconded by D. Perkins. Therefore, administration recommends that Council approve the 2023-2024 proposed recreation rates and fees. Okay, thank you. Is there any questions from Council? All right, seeing none, we did discuss this at our council committee this week and I felt quite confident in how you responded. So, all right, to the motion. Uh, <laughs> uh, to the motion, all in favor? All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Marty. Good job. Yeah. All right, moved by Councillor Nesbitt that policy F-002-032 entitled Residential New Build Incentive Policy be approved. That'll be Amanda. Through the chair to Deputy Mayor Goodenough and Council, as a result of discussions held, administration was directed to create a policy to encourage residential development and set out guidelines and procedures for administration to implement a residential new build incentive program. The draft policy was presented to Council Committee on June 13th, and it was recommended that the policy be forwarded to Council for formal approval. Therefore, Administration is recommending that Policy F-002-032, entitled Residential New Build Incentive Policy, be approved. Okay. Questions from Council? Seeing none, all right, all in favor? Good, thank you. Carried. All right, uh, moved by Councillor Dries that the pros proposed building development and planning application fee be approved effective June 20th, 2023, and that Council consider the deferral of offsite levies on a case by case basis, provided adequate security is in place, preferably in the form of an irrevocable letter of credit. Alan. Thank you. Through the Chair to Mayor and Council. Council's strategy to incentivize residential development has already included a 15% reduction in residential lot prices, and now, of course, the proposed residential new build incentive policy. 
uh, administration was also directed to look at waiving our development permit fees and our 25% portion of building permit fees and to consider a deferral program for off-site levies provided we have that adequate security in place to protect the interests of the city. Uh, the current and proposed uh, fee schedules are attached and the recommendation is that the proposed building development and planning application fees be approved effective June 20th, 2023 and that council consider the deferral of offsite levies on a case by case basis provided adequate security is in place, preferably in the form of an irrevocable letter of credit. And we say preferably because maybe they can come up with something else that would adequately uh, protect our in interests so that we've got some leeway there. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, questions from council? Seeing none, all in favor of this motion? All right, it's carried. All right, moved by Councillor Jessica that the June 2023 financial variance report be accepted as information and I'll be Shelley on the big screen. Thank you very much uh, through the chair to Deputy Mayor and Council. So the report that I've attached uh, finds the city approximately 44% of the way through 2023 year already. Um, uh, current, so now our property taxes, repaving taxes, uh, surface irrigation charges have now been levied and with that for, so they are levied for the full year and with that it means that about 72.5 percent of our revenue is uh, currently receivable or or received uh, overall we're in line with uh, our operating budget um, considering the timing of different expenditures that we might see throughout the year so there are a couple of uh, of notable events that have occurred since my last report that I will just mention as follows. Um, so although we are currently in line with a budget regarding the ATCO fan franchise fees, uh, we have received an updated forecast for 2023 franchise fees for the City of Brooks from ATCO Gas. And the it, with that, they have lowered their uh, original forecasted estimate by approximately uh, $57,259 or 7.41%. So ATCO's original forecast uh, for our franchise fees was uh, just uh, over $772,000. And their, uh, their updated estimate is lower than that now due to a reduction in the distribution rate for natural gas, as well as a warmer, um, a warmer winter than they were anticipating. Um, so although it hasn't, we haven't seen any effect of that yet, we will continue to keep track of this potential variance. Um, next, as everyone knows, the city of Brooks's lease with the County of Newell for the Youth Development Center has ended earlier this year. And as a result, our rental revenues have ended as did the expenses that are associated with um, operating and subleasing the building. So as our 2023 budget uh, contemplated a full year for both the revenues and expenses, um, this will leave us in a, a negative variance of approximately 15,000 at the end of the year. And that really just represents the net revenues from May to December, which we will not realize. Um, uh, next, following the city's uh, property taxes being levied, um, new information was brought forward to benchmark assessment consultants, and those are our assessors, of course, um, which resulted in the reduction of some assessment values. So the assess ass assessment changes uh, occur every year during the assessment appeal period. However, in 2023, uh, there were a few fairly significant reductions uh, that will leave a negative variance that we might notice in our city's property tax revenues. Uh, we estimated about uh, 26,000. Now the education and seniors housing portion of that levy uh, can be added to next year's levy and recovered. Um, however, the municipal portion of taxes, which is about 20,000 uh, will remain a negative variance. So with that, uh, there were no significant variances to report in regards to the capital budget. 
and administration recommends that this report be accepted as information. Thank you, Shelley. Is there any questions at this point? No? I, I do have one question, Shelley. Um, just with the with us that lease with the County of Newell building for uh, the Youth Development Center, um, although we did lose income on that, we wouldn't be then paying uh, the uh, heating and gas bill. So that kind of would probably save us some money in, in there, wouldn't it? Yes, yeah, through, so through the chair to Deputy Mayor, um, good enough. So the, the estimates that I put on the report of the $15,000 variance, I believe that's what I said, yes. Yep. That represents the net revenues. So the it does take into account the reduction in revenues as well as the reduction in budgeted expenses. Okay, thank you for that clarification. All right, to the motion uh, to accept the variance report as information. All in favor? Okay, carried, thank you. All right, thank you, Shelley. Uh, moved by Councillor Nesbitt that the council approve uh, that council approve to provide funds for a contractor to paint the first installment of three soccer pitch lines at both Griffin Park School and Uplands Elementary, a total of six pitches uh, to the maximum cost of twenty five hundred dollars to be absorbed through operations, with the understanding that any costs to upkeep the lines will not be provided by the city. And Don will be speaking to that. Thank you. Thank you. Through the chair, the mayor, and council. Uh, Grassland Soccer Association made a presentation to the Brooks and District Parks and Recreation Board to have lines painted in the soccer pitches. Attached is a letter of request from the Grassland Soccer Association at the May 17, 2023 Brooks and District Recreation and Parks Board meeting. The following a motion was made. It was moved by Am Wardrop and carried and seconded by. G. Scriver. The motion is the same as the recommendation, so I'll just read the recommendation. Therefore, rec administration recommends that council approve the funds for a contractor to paint the first installment of three soccer pitch lines at Gri both Griffin Park School and Uplands Elementary, a total of six pitches to a maximum cost of $2,500 to be absorbed through operations with the understanding that any cost to upkeep the lines will not be provided by the city. Any questions at this for this one? Councillor Dries. So I see the request is for the for the two, and then they also mentioned the, the one at CTK and the Duke of Sutherland Park. So why were these not included? Do, do they don't need painting? The, the motion that was made was only for these two. I don't know why the, the other two weren't included maybe John could answer that he was at the meeting here's Randy so through the, through the chair to Councillor Idris so um, basically grassland soccer was just looking for additional soccer pitches to help alleviate some of the pressures on the the ones that they use at Eastbrook and um, at the high school what they were finding is that they were uh, experiencing some user conflicts with um, just other people wanting to, to play soccer on, on soccer fields that had lines ready to go. Um, and they were accessing them the same time that Grassland Soccer had them booked. So they were just coming to essentially request um, help from the city to have more soccer pitches with lines available. And so they were more happy with whatever they were just suggesting um, some options of, of where some potential soccer pitches could be and, and this was what the board had discussed was to have these ones um, done. I, I, I actually did have some conversation with some people who use uh, the Duke of Sutherland Park mm -hmm. and they were actually talking about the fact that the lines there are, are, are not very well clear and, and, and they were actually hoping that um, Parks and Recreation would do that. Do, do Park and Recreation does that regularly, or how does that happen? Um, through the chair to Councillor Idris. Um, the Parks Department has never clean, pa painted the lines. It's not, we, we have just never done that. We don't even have a painter. 
Um, so the request to paint the lines was that came forward from from this person was uh, not in the parks budget. Okay. So if uh, the so the soccer associations and the people that play soccer are normally the ones that go out and paint those lines. Mm. So can Does that I answer your question? Yeah, no, you answered the question. Yeah. Okay. So my question is, can we paint the lines? On addition to? On, on, these, on these other ones too. So my question is, that are we setting a precedent then for request every year from the soccer association? Um, or is this out of, because we don't normally do this, right? This isn't part of our, our scope. And so now, or is this going to be now a new request every year for that? Well, I know you can't answer that, Don. But yeah, well, well, as it is right now, we don't have the people. We don't have the staff. There, it's not included in our scope of work. Yeah. So that's why it would have to be contracted. So if it was, if the Parks Department was going to start painting the lines when all the soccer fields in the city of Brooks, then it'd be a budget item. We would just put that additional money in the budget and we would just get a contractor to start painting them. But as it is right now, this this twenty five hundred dollars would come directly out of our operating, and we would just be either go over budget, or we'd have to try not do something else. Can I ask Randy a question? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Why did I go to that chair? Um, instead of it coming out of Parks Department, wouldn't they're requesting it out of from your area? Is that what I'm understanding? Like. Or you're just you're speaking to it because it was motioned in your uh, board meeting. Yeah, through the chair right. to councillor Goodenough. So it is the recreation and and parks board, and and as far as like the parks outdoor facilities, um, those fall under Don's okay. department, and he looks after those those budgets. So um, yeah, my my budgets are for the two recreation facilities. Right. Basically. Okay. Don and then Councillor Dries. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, and, and also our budgets don't include any work in any school grounds. Right. They're only within the City of Brooks Parks. This is going outside of our normal um, area where we work. So, so just a response to that. So hypothetically, you don't paint even the so or the baseball diamonds. That's looked after by that association. Okay. Councillor Dries. So how much it's going to cost, for example, to, to do uh, like a soccer field? Like if you want to paint a soccer field? I believe the price was, they had gotten a price from the contractor, I believe it was $2,500 to paint them, to paint them once and to maintain them mm. four times or something like that throughout the summer. But it, I'd have to nail that price right down. How's your budget looking? <laughs> Councillor Dries. I would like to submit an amendment to the motion. Okay. And I would like the motion to say. No, I'm just going to say I would like the motion to include the, the Duke of Sutherland uh, Park. Uh, soccer field. not the the Duke CTK uh, I'm, I'm just going to say the Duke of Sutherland Park uh, soccer field okay uh, so we need to make an amendment so all right moved by Councillor Dries that the motion be amended to include the soccer pitch at the Duke of Sutherland Park out of funding out of operations, funding out of operations. And now we're going to uh, vote on the amendment. All in favor of the motion to the amendment? Okay, so it's two to three. Okay, passes three to one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that was the wrong one. Yeah, we still have a discussion. Now you, now you do the vote on the motion as amended with okay. the Senate. So we can discuss that. Okay, so. Yeah, so um, 
It was asked whether this is going to be a setting a precedent or suggest it might be. Um, is, I wonder if that, or it doesn't say, is that their intent or uh, they generate their own revenues as an association? Is this a one time thing? Is that our intent that this used to just be a one time thing? It's a great question. Don, Randy? Alan? Through the chair to mayor, deputy mayor, and council, with the motion that we have, this would be a one time event. It would have to come back next year if we were to do it again. Councillor Dries? Uh, if possible, maybe when we do the budgeting process, if there is a way we can have, you know, this is what it would cost if we decided, for example, these, these soccer fields that are not maybe associated with the school, which is ours, like the Duke of Sutherland, it's like, a, it's like a city park. Um, if we wanted to include those, what would that cost us? Maybe it's something that we can look at. Okay. One of the things, uh, if I can speak, or Don, go ahead, sir. I, I, I couldn't quite hear you. Did you say it was just the city parks? One of the concerns I do have with this is um, when we've when other organizations have asked for finances, we've asked for a, re a request to see their finances, um, whether it's being the bandits or um, the kinsmen, whatever it is. We've always asked, for, we're asking for finances, and we're not seeing it in this. So uh, again, we're kind of going against the precedent that we've set as a council um, to this. So kind of questioning wrestling with this a bit so yeah so uh, if there's no yep no. I guess one other question this is for for now or for next season because I think for the season's pretty well done isn't it for this season I believe Randy yeah through the chair to Councillor Jessica so it it is just for this season and just wanted to clarify too that Grassland Soccer was requesting this on behalf of other people who are wanting to access the fields in the community they do their own lines at Eastbrook and BCHS where they run their program so it, it's just they felt that there was a big enough demand in the community that there were more soccer pitches required um, just as an example they at their presentation stated they have 600 kids registered in outdoor soccer this year which is a phenomenal number so it is a growing sport in in the community and and they were just hoping to provide more facilities to those who wanted to play all right thank you for that so to the motion or sorry yeah, to the motion as amended. Am I reading this one again? Or no, this one's done. All right, to the vote to the motion as amended. All in favor? Yep. That's carried. All right, moved by Councillor Adrice that the council award the 2024 uh, street sweeper purchase to Joe Johnson Equipment in the amount of four hundred and eighty three thousand nine hundred and seventy two dollars to be purchased in 2024 and that 20 and that two hundred and forty one thousand nine hundred and eighty six thousand dollars be funded by the equipment reserve and two hundred and forty one nine hundred and eighty six dollars of by operation and further that the funding be incorporated into the 2024 capital budget Don. Thank you, through the Chair to Mayor and Council. In the city's 10-year capital plan, the Public Works Department has a street sweeper budgeted for replacement in the year 2024. The city utilized Canoe Source Well as a procurement entity to obtain competitive pricing and to meet the Canada Free Trade Agreements for the sweeper meeting the specifications. One sweeper met our specifications and another came close. The prices for the two sweepers are the Elgin Broomberry in the amount of $483,972, supplied by Joe Johnson Equipment, Eagle, the Elgin Eagle in the amount of $502,572, supplied by Joe Johnson Equipment, 
The Elgin Broom Bear is similar to the current city's current sweeper that has worked well for the past 10 years. The budget in the 10-year capital plan for 2024 is 370,000, 50 percent funded by equipment reserves and 50 percent funded by operations. Therefore, staff recommends that council award the 2024 street sweeper purchase to Joe Johnson Equipment in the amount of $483,972 to be purchased in 2024 and that $241,986 be funded by equipment reserves and $241,986 by operations and further that the funding be incorporated into the 2024 capital budget. Any questions? Councillor Dries. <coughs> so in the 10-year capital plan, when, when, when the 370,000 um, was put in the budget, was there some sort of like a quotation that you got at that time and then prices increased? There is a big difference between the plan and how prices came. Yeah, that sweeper, when we bought it in 2014, we paid uh, 260 thousand dollars, I believe. Mm -hmm. So it's just about doubled in a matter of 10 years. Um, but yes, uh, we reach out for quotes um, when we do the 10-year capital, and then we we usually add a percentage for an increase per year in order to get. The, but because of the on the way inflation is these days and, and just the way COVID has made things, um, prices are yeah. unpredictable a lot of times. Okay. Hmm. okay, any other questions? Councillor Jessica? Hmm. Yes, yeah, so we did discuss as a committee and uh, the fact that the old machine is past its best buy date and requires some substantial inputs to keep it running. Uh, is it good enough that we will be retaining it as a backup machine? No, no, I, I wouldn't recommend keeping it. It'll, they're very costly to repair. It would be best to, to not have it around. Okay. Councillor Dries. So what do we do with them? Do we sell them or do we? With this one here, we, um, we've looked at two different options. We've looked at setting it to auction and we've, uh, we were offered a value for a trade which um, I'll, I was going to discuss with Alan at a later date. Okay, thank you. All right, then to the motion. All in favor? Okay. You know, Don, I'm seeing a pattern here. You started that so low, medium. Now you're just going up in numbers. Okay. All right, moved by Councillor Nesbitt that the Works and Utility Administration uh, building design, tender, and contract administration be awarded to MPE Engineering in the amount of $722,528, excluding GST. Don again. Thank you. Through the Chair, the Mayor, and Council. On March 9th, 2023, staff posted a re request for proposal on Alberta, Alberta purchasing connection for the design, tender, and contract administration for the construction of a new public workshop and administration building. The request closed April 11th. 11 proposals were received and are attached with cost and scoring. The budget is $879,691. The new public works building committee reviewed the 11 proposals and scored them based on project team and technical qualifications, experience, understanding of project scope and the methodology proposed project schedule and cost. The cost was scored higher based on how thoroughly everything was captured in the proposals and lower based on how many costs would be added as unknowns or extras throughout the project. Therefore, the lower costs were given a lower score. Costs above budget were also given a lower score. The attached spreadsheet shows the proposed <coughs> proposal scoring. From this scoring, the two top firms were S2 Architecture and MPE Engineering. They were selected, references were checked, and the applicants were asked to come and present their proposals to the committee. Based on the proponents' scoring results from the interviews, 
presentation and discussion with the committee, it was staff's recommendation that the Works and Utilities Administration building design, tender and contract administration request for proposal be awarded to MPE Engineering as they had the best understanding of the project, the city's needs, and are qualified to complete this work. This decision was also based on, in, on reference checks on these companies. Therefore, staff recommends that the Works and Utilities Administration building design, tender, and contract administration be awarded to MPE Engineering in the amount of $722,529, excluding GST. Questions? I got one, I guess. Um, have you guys set, have we set a budget of what we're proposing to be spending on the new uh, facilities yeah the, the budget the what's left I think in the 10 year after this is just over 10 million okay okay thank you no other questions all right all right to the motion all in favor okay all right moved by councillor Nesbitt that bylaw number 23-3 oh sorry missed one. Oh, young road Moved by Councillor Jessica that the Council approve the city portion of 50% for the repair and paving of the intersection of Young Road and Silver Sage in the amount of $44,550. Don. Thank you, through the Chair, Mayor, Council. The city was informed by the county that they are paving Silver Sage Road from Young Road to Highway 36. County and city staff discussed the need to repair a couple locations where the base has failed in the intersection and to pave the rest of the intersection at the same time Silver Sage is being paved. The intersection is the city's and west and south of it is the county's. The attached map indicates the city portion. The county informed us they would cover 50% of the cost. The total cost is $89,100 attached. So the city's portion would be $44,550. Funding for this project would be from our street improvement budget. There is 175,000 remaining in that budget. Therefore, staff is recommending that council approve the city's portion of 50% for the repair and paving of the intersection of Young Road and Silver Sage in the amount of $44,550. All right, questions? Okay, all in favor of the motion? Perfect, thank you. All right, moved by Councillor Nesbitt that bylaw number 23 13, being a bylaw of the City of Brooks in the province of Alberta, to amend bylaw number 14 12, being a bylaw, uh, sorry, land use bylaw, to be introduced for first time reading. And is that Gavin? Yes, through the Chair, to Mayor, Deputy Mayor and Council, we have for you this evening bylaw 23-13, which proposes to redesignate land south of Queensway East and west of Stafford Lake from residential single detached to direct control to accommodate a townhouse development. And as per the requirements of the MGA, you're required to have a public hearing prior to Council's decision on the final reading of the bylaw. In 2021, phases one and two of the Wellings development was put forward and adopted by council as a direct control district. And staff has been working with the developer and moving this project forward, as you may be aware. Uh, during that time, they also acquired this new piece of land legally described as block two plan 841174 as shown in schedule A. It is the intent of the developer to develop this alongside of phases one and two as Wellings phase three. Okay, so to move this forward, we need the direct control district. There are several changes required to that district and they are outlined in schedule B of your report. 
And that is just to include the legal description and then update the mapping that is there for showing phase three as being contiguous to the existing development. Uh, there are several next steps in the process. We likely would see a subdivision move through as this uh, development would need to get out of the way of some buildings. Uh, lot lines are proposed through buildings, etc., as well as adoption of a new development agreement for the area. The proposal is to move forward with a public hearing uh, at the next uh, council meeting. And as such, the recommendation is that council complete first reading tonight and set a public hearing date. Any questions you may have, I'd be willing to answer. Okay. Any questions from council? Looks fairly straightforward. All right. Thank you. To the motion. All in favor? Okay. Carried. All right. Motioned by Councillor Jessica that the public hearing be held on yep, July 4th, 2023 at 5 p.m. to gather public input regarding bylaw number 2313. All in favor of that? We're good. Okay. Carried. All right. All right, moved by Councillor Drees that bylaw number 23-11, being a bylaw of the City of Brooks in the province of Alberta, to amend bylaw number 23-06, being a bylaw to provide for the establishment of the advisory, Environmental Advisory Committee of the City of Brooks be introduced and read a first time. Amy. Thank you, through the Chair to Deputy Mayor and Council. Eco Brooks is made up of 12 members, and out of the 12 members, not more than seven may be citizen at large members with a maximum of two residing outside of the city, but within the boundaries of the county, excluding Bazano, Dutchess, and Rosemary. Eco Brooks recently had a person from Dutchess interested, on serving, interested in serving on the committee. However, no application was submitted, as the definition of County of Newell in the current bylaw excludes that municipality. At the June 8th Eco Brooks meeting, the committee discussed the composition of the committee and would like to see the bylaw amended so that of the seven citizen at large members, a maximum of two can reside outside of the city, but within the county of Newell, including the municipalities within the county. The committee feels this change will provide a greater opportunity to recruit members. <clears throat> and the committee reviews all applications received prior to submitting appointment recommendations to council. Therefore, administration is recommending that council provide three readings and adopt the bylaw. Okay, thank you. And is there any questions on this? Ready? You're good. Okay. Uh, all in favor? All right. Carried. Moved by Councillor Jessica that bylaw number 23 11 be read a second time. Do you need to read that? No? All in favor? All right. Carried. And moved by Councillor Dries that bylaw number 23-11 being given, uh, given three readings at this meeting. This needs to be carried unanimously. All in favor? Yep. <coughs> carried. Okay. Moved by Councillor Nesbitt that bylaw number 23-11 being a bylaw of the City of Brooks in the province of Alberta to amend Bylaw number 23-06, being a bylaw to provide for the establishment of the advi Environmental Advisory Committee mm. of the City of Brooks be read a third time and adopted. All in favor? Uh, good. Carried. All right, questions from the media. Good evening, everyone. I have a few questions for you. I'm going to start with the soccer painting, soccer line painting, please. Um, sorry, we couldn't really hear a lot of the conversation here, so I just want to check something. Is it $2,500 in total, that, including the Duke of Sutherland? Because if each one is 100, is the Duke of Sutherland approved to be painted? Alan. Hi, Sandra. Yeah, the Duke of Southern, Duke of Sutherland was approved, but it's over and above that 2,500. The 2,500 was the total for those other six. So the new amount is 2680? 
It'll be about that if they're all at the same price, yeah. Okay. I don't know that I trust your math, though. I don't trust my math either, <laughs> so that's okay. Calculators are really cool, but um, I believe the motion, though, was for only 2,500. Uh, the motion, the motion was for 2,500, but then when it was amended to add the Duke of Sutherland, it also said that that funding come out of the operations as well. That's wonderful. And can I just get a timing on when this is going to be happening, please? To be announced. We don't have a date. We can get. Isn't back the to you. soccer season almost over? So right now they would just get a hold of the contractor and say yes, go ahead, and then as soon as the contractor can get there, hmm. they do it. I'd also say though to that, even though the soccer association, it was requested by other members of the soccer community, uh, which soccer can go through the whole year. And uh, it is so well used and uh, this is money well spent. So is this going to be something that may be discussed in future budgets, i.e. your next budget meeting, I'm assuming, in November? Yeah. Yes, I think it was mentioned that we look at at least doing our parks in the budget. That's great, thanks. Okay, um, sorry, the Youth Development Center, I'm assuming that's makerspace? Actually, it was the whole county building, so Makerspace was in there and, and the Francophone Association, um, a couple others, one other. Now, I know the there. city does not have control over Makerspace. However, because they have been paying quite a bit for it, I am wondering if it has a new home yet. Does anybody know? They don't. No, that not at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, the... Wellings site received first reading. It's going to third reading, I believe it was, or it's going to the public hearing on July 4th. What happens if the public doesn't agree with this, although everything's been installed and the land has basically been developed except for the structures? Uh, this, this is not the part that's already been approved, so this is another piece of land just adjacent to it. So uh, no development has started in this phase yet. The piece of land that's adjacent to it has a house on it. Is that the one? Yep. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, sorry, I had one more. Recreation, I believe, Randy, you had said that the average increase is 388 Yes, that's correct. Okay, because the party pack is a 40% increase. So does that skew numbers at all, or is that not really being looked at because it's a new number? No, the, that um, total average increase of 3.88% takes so that those increases of the party packs into effect, so it definitely would skew that percentage. The other rates and fees are a much lower increase. And I think that is all. You guys are off the hook pretty easily. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moved by Councillor Nesbitt that the meeting adjourn at 5.55 p.m. All in favor? All right.